I'm gonna show you how to fully rig out the Sony a6600 into a little mini cinema rig. Every great camera rig starts out with a solid cage. So for this build, I've actually chosen one from Nicey Rig instead of my usual go-to, which is Small Rig. I do not know what Small Rig was thinking when they designed this cage, but I will be sending it back because it's missing some major features that you need. Whereas on the Nicey Rig cage, it has those features that I need. For example, on the top here, it has NATO rail, so it can quickly attach accessories and remove them without any tools. And it has that same NATO rail on the right here and on the left. Whereas on the small rig cage, there's no NATO rail to be found, nothing on the top or on either of the sides. And I just don't understand why, because on their previous cage, the A6500, which I'm filming with right now, it has some NATO rail. So why they got rid of it, I can't understand. Another thing that's a really big fail for them is that there is no Arca Swiss plate here on the bottom. Whereas with the Nicey rig, it has an Arca Swiss mount plate there. So you can take it on and off of Arca Swiss without an additional plate. I definitely recommend it. Do not get the small rig one for your A6600. Let's get right into the base of this build, which is all built around this small rig 15 millimeter base plate. And then on top of it, we have the small rig Arca Swiss mount. And I've chosen to do that because I don't need an additional plate with this cage to mount it on top of this rig. So it keeps things nice and minimal and light. So I'm gonna put this right on. Because we have that NATO rail on top of the cage, I can quickly put a NATO rail top handle on here, also from small rig. Then I'm gonna throw the small rig monitor mount on there. And this is the one that has airy locating pins. And I'm gonna put it right in the front of the top handle here. Next, we're gonna throw a large five inch monitor on top of the handle here. So it makes it easy to pull focus and get your exposure. Now, this is the Atomos Ninja V, so it's also a recorder that will allow us to record in ProRes. Now, I already have a cage on this. This one's from 8sin, but there are many other companies that make a nice cage for it as well. So let's get this mounted. Now we're gonna get the V-mount battery solution here on the back, and I'm trying to keep this as minimal as possible. So for this, I'm using this 15 millimeter hinge from Small Rig, and then I've also put their little V-mount adapter onto it that just screws right onto the hinge itself. I'm a huge fan of it because it's just a really minimalistic way to add a V-mount battery to any camera. So I'll slide this right into this back base plate and then tighten it down. Now let's get the V-mount battery on there. And I chose this one from Yin Chem that's 99 watt hours because it's small and it keeps everything nice and compact. And I'm actually mounting it upside down. Now we're gonna get the dummy battery in there and this is the Z battery to D tap. And this actually has the converters built into it so it'll give you the right voltage, which is eight volt for the Sony A6600. So you don't have to worry about frying your camera when you plug it into a D tap that goes anywhere from 12 to 16 volts. So let's get that plugged in. Now let's throw a lens on here. And for this one, I'm gonna be using the Tokina Cinema 11 to 20 millimeters T 2.9. And I love this lens because it has great range and it's just really high quality. But you can of course throw any lens on there that you need. And for this one, because it's a Canon EF mount, I'm actually going to be using an adapter, which is just a dead adapter. There's no electronics, no focus control or anything like that because this is a fully manual lens. So it's super cheap, but it's gonna allow me to go from Sony E mount to Canon EF. So I'm just gonna throw that on there. And I'm already loving how this rig looks. It's so nice and compact, but totally functional. But there's still a couple things we need to add to it. So let's get the HDMI cables plugged in here. And so I'm gonna go from the camera to the Atomos. And then we're also gonna set up a wireless transmitter. So I'm going to do an HDMI loop out. Now let's get the wireless transmitter attached to the rig. And for this one, I'm using the Hollyland Cosmo 600 because it's really high quality and it gives you great range at up to 600 feet. Now, I was trying to figure out a good way to mount this to the rig, but keep it minimalistic and compact. And I was just scratching my head, trying to think of something. I really didn't want it mounted up here because then it'll interfere with the handle when I'm trying to grab it. And I didn't want it like in the way of the monitor. There's not really any mounting points back here on the battery or this back hinge. So what I decided to do was use some pretty much heavy duty Velcro that I just cut 
and put right on the back of the battery just with the sticky side down and then I put the other side of the Velcro sticky side down on the transmitter itself. So with those two pieces, it actually makes a great connection here right on the back of the battery pack itself. And it looks kind of awesome because it just hangs there right on the back. And honestly, it is not coming off. It's extremely solid. So it's a great way to add it onto the rig keep things nice, minimalistic, and you can still pull it on and off when you need to. Now to give this rig a bit of that red Komodo feel, I'm actually gonna take the LCD and turn it completely up so that it is parallel with the top of the camera. And the main reason I'm doing this is because the V-mount battery itself blocks the LCD, which makes it difficult to see all of your camera settings. So now with it up like this, I can easily look down right on top of the camera and see all of my settings without trying to look around the V-mount battery. So it's actually a really great way and it gives it a bit of that, you know, Komodo feel because the Komodo has that LCD right on top. So I thought that was kind of cool. Now we're gonna run power to the wireless transmitter and I'm using this cable that goes from Limo to DTAP. Okay, we have everything powered up now, and I wanna show you what it looks like from behind the camera. So, of course you have this big five inch monitor, so it makes it really easy to tilt and see everything that you need to when you're out shooting. And then from the top as the operator, you can look right down onto this LCD and see all of your camera settings without trying to look around that V-mount battery. And this rig is really built out for doing handheld work. So I wanna show you what it looks like to grab this top handle. Everything's nice and clear. And then you can put a hand underneath to do your focusing and moves and everything. So I do that shake test all the time. Everything's solid on there, nothing's moving. And it's just a really great rig build. Now, of course, there are other things that you can add to this rig if you want to, it's completely module. For example, you can add a wireless lavalier pack to the back here on this top handle, which I actually can show right now, but because I'm using it to film this video, I can't put it here on the back. Of course, you could throw a shotgun microphone onto the cold shoe here. And then if you need a map box, you could grab one of those. So we have this one from Polar Pro, the base camp, and I can just clamp this right onto the front. If you want to throw a follow focus onto this, you can. So I'm grabbing the Nucleus Nano from Tilta and I'm using this six inch 15 millimeter rod from Small Rig. And I actually already have the little extension adapter in there. So I'll just screw this right on. Now here's what's awesome about this rig. It's very modular. So yes, you can go completely handheld with it using the top handle and just pulling focus here, or you can throw it onto a tripod or slider. You just need to put a quick release plate of your choosing on the bottom of the entire rig. Because most everything is on NATO rail or Arca Swiss, it's really quick to take apart with no tools. So let's take off this top handle. And then I'm actually gonna take the camera right off the Arca Swiss. There you go, it's already disconnected from the rig. All you gotta do is pull out the cables. Just like that, super quick. And of course, you could take this matte box off if you even had it on to begin with. And we are ready to go back to shooting really small and compact or throw this right onto a gimbal with that Arca Swiss mount. All right guys, if you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe right now because I have a ton more videos coming out in shooting, editing, lighting, gear reviews, everything like that, and you don't wanna miss it. All right, I'll see you in the next video.